My name is Dr. Vandana Shiva. Uh, I started a movement, Navdanya, for seed saving, and that's why I'm so happy to be here at the Expo, because seed diversity, for me, is the most beautiful sight, the most joyful sight, and the experience of hope. I'm basically trained as a physicist, and I'd become very passionate about quantum theory and its foundations, and never imagined I'd be working with seeds or agriculture. I started to look at agriculture in 1984, when we had the disaster of Bhopal and the emergence of violence in Punjab. And I said, why are we using all these chemicals that kill people, that push farmers into debt? And I did the studies, I did the research, committed myself to do non-violent farming. And then I find out the corporations want to own the seed through patenting, through genetic engineering. That's the day in 1987 I decided I would dedicate my life to the saving of seed and the defense of seed freedom. I think the first aspect that's important is to recognize that hidden away, tucked away in small remote farms, the diversity is still there and we've got to save it and distribute it, multiply it. So we created community seed banks. We've created 120 community seed banks because open pollinated seeds must become the basis of another agriculture. Now, farmers have been taught chemical farming as the green revolution for the last 50 years. That's what universities teach the farmers. That's what extension officers teach the farmer. So in order for farmers to use their ancient seeds, and become breeders again, we had to start training them in participatory breeding in ecological agriculture. We did that and then the farmers themselves said now we must have a distinctive market for biodiversity, for organic, that we shape, not the market of monocultures and toxics that's destroying the farmers, 300,000 suicides in India and the biodiversity. So basically it's about saving seeds to grow food ecologically, not industrially, and then to create local markets, people-centered markets, rather than the corporate-controlled globalized market. That's what we've been doing for the last 30 years, and it works. Um, so far, the GMOs were introduced as Bt toxic crops and herbicide tolerant crops. The next stage of the growth of the industrial agricultural empire focusing on genetically engineering seed is working on two planks. The first is the plank of saying, oh, we will put iron into bananas to get rid of iron deficiency rather than just grow the diversity of crops that bring you a lot of iron. Or a golden rice. We're going to solve blindness by putting a little yellow tinge into rice. We have red rices and purple rices, but in any case you don't turn to rice for vitamin A. We have the intelligence to use much more diversity. So we have a huge campaign which we launched on the 8th of March, International Women's Day, saying biodiversity feeds the world, not GMOs. Women feed the world, not corporations. The second place where the corporations are pushing themselves is to use the climate crisis that they have contributed to. After all, 40% of all greenhouse gases come from an industrial globalized agriculture, which is the subject of my book, Soil Not Oil, written more than 10 years ago, reissued now by North Atlantic Press. Today, they're using the crisis they created to further monopolize the seed and are talking about genetically engineering for climate resilience. They can't engineer resilience Resilience is a systemic response of an entire organism, an entire system. The patents they're taking on climate resilient crops are basically patents of biopiracy, the word I use for the stealing of the biodiversity and knowledge of third world farmers by corporations. So we've, we have created seed banks for climate resilience and we are fighting these patents. We are fighting the propaganda by the Bill Gates and others who saying without genetic engineering we can't deal with climate change. So the false claim to biofortification and nutrition as well as the false claim for climate resilience 
our seed diversity, the diversity of our varieties, the diversity of our species, growing in harmony together in biodiverse agricultural systems with organic soils. That's the answer to nutrition. That's the answer to resilience. And we now measure the nutritional benefits of indigenous seeds and indigenous crops and biodiverse farming systems. We can feed two planets by conserving our seeds because these are seeds of nutrition. In addition to that, our farmers are earning 10 times more than the farmers locked into buying seed from the Monsantos and the Syngentas and the buyers. I think first of all we should all turn towards those who have been saving seeds. Um, thanking them, but joining with them as a movement. Here in the US it is groups like Baker Street. In India it's movements like Navdanya. We have a seed freedom movement that links together globally all the seed savers of the world. Seedfreedom.info is the website. There's a seed declaration that everyone can commit themselves to. But in addition to taking seeds from groups like Baker Street, after all these seeds are reproducible, <coughs> once they've taken it, they can save it. Everyone should make a commitment, I will be a seed saver. Even if it's in one pot in my little apartment. Second, people should start making commitments that for the sake of the planet's health, for their own health, for democracy and freedom, they are not going to eat food from industrial varieties and GMOs. They will turn to ecological varieties and heirloom varieties because they're full of nutrition, they're full of taste, and they create freedom for nature and freedom for people. So eating diversity is the best way to conserve diversity. The more we eat these unusual tomatoes, these unusual pumpkins, the more we get rid of the monoculture of the mind and with it the monoculture in the field and the monoculture on our plates. Monoculture in the field is ecological poverty. Monocultures on our plates is nutritional poverty. It is at the root of so much malnutrition and disease today. So these are seeds of nutrition. These are seeds of freedom. These are seeds of hope. Everywhere around the world, the giant corporations, the chemical corporations who now want to own the seed, first tried to patent the seed. But because our movements for seed saving and seed freedom grew, they are now trying something new. Making it illegal for people to have their own seed or exchange their seed. They tried it in India in 2004, we fought it back. They tried it in Europe in 2014, we made sure that rolled back. Today, it's time for the California citizens to organize around a new seed law passed on 1st of January 2015 which says you can't exchange seed beyond three miles that no county no city can make its own laws related to any dimension of seed that all corporations are persons how can you legalize a fiction and worse they're saying the only people capable of doing research and breeding varieties are the corporations. No, every seed has the intelligence to reproduce. Every farmer has the intelligence to be a breeder. Every child should be made a breeder because that means learning from and working with nature. The California seed law, as we announced at the Heirloom Expo, is a law that should be treated like slavery was treated, like racism was treated, like Gandhi treated the salt laws imposed by the British which said you can't make your own salt. The California law is saying you can't have your own seed, we're going to force Monsanto seeds on you. This is a law that should not be obeyed. So we've given a call for the Satyagraha, the fight for truth which is Gandhi's word for a civil disobedience and I hope on 2nd of October which is Gandhi's birth anniversary all over California and the US, people will send a message to the government to say, we have higher laws to obey, the law of diversity, the law of human rights, the law of nature, the law of the seed. Therefore, we cannot obey Monsanto laws. Either you take this back, or anyway, we will not obey. We'll save our seeds, we'll exchange our seeds in celebration of our diversity and our life. The reason I come for the Heirloom Expo 
is because it is the biggest celebration of seeds, their diversity, the love of people who are the seed savers. This is an activity not inspired by greed or power or accumulation. It's an activity inspired by love, by sharing, by generosity. And I come to the Heirloom, Heirloom Expo because I want to pay a tribute to the seeds that are on display here. I want to pay tribute to the amazing team at Baker Street that every year work so hard with this labor of love. They work all year round with the seeds and growing them and saving them and packing them and getting them to people. But the Heirloom Expo has become a lighthouse for another agricultural development, uh, agricultural development based on diversity and freedom of seeds.